Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you might be. That was a super long time. I've said that before and you don't know it. Before I start and get into it, what I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask Bruce one thing. Um, some of my family have come down there on holiday recently. Have you seen them on their holiday in New Zealand at all? Who's there? So, some of my family's been over there. I've been, apparently been enjoying your beaches and, um, and, and having a rare old time from what I understand. They look like you. I haven't recognised them. No, you haven't. You haven't. You, you're not. You've not tweaked, have you? Or have you tweaked? That's a terrible English Irish family that caused no end of New oh, Zealand yes. uh, oh, destruction. Those, yes. There you are. Yes. You've got lovely alive. people, salt of the earth. You know, we really like them. I think travellers, aren't they? I believe so. <laughs> yes, I believe so. Yes. The or, or um, yes, uh, romantic, tra romantic traveling folk. Yes, um, but yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that even made the news here. Big news. Oh, uh, I thought I'd see you. I could suck you in there, but I didn't do that very well. Well, no, hello everybody. Well, what an interesting. You know, just before we come on air, um, Ian, Ian had already broken a big story in the UK last week. I think, in fact, on Friday, I think he'd seen that. Well, Ian, why don't you? Why, uh, here's Rory. Rory's joined us. G'day, Rory. Let's cut straight to Rory. We'll come back to you because Rory's on duty. How are you doing, Rory? I'm doing well, thanks. Yeah, pardon, uh, pardon the late arrival here. I hope I didn't disrupt anything. Oh no, no, no never any disruptions. Um, well, Rory Feely, you are a man that's going to tell us all about some, well, about channel wings and hot flight and your mission. Perhaps you can unpack that a little bit for us. Yeah, sure. So uh, we are a small startup company based in uh, the eastern United States, um, and you know our primary mission is to is to be a part of the solution for transportation issues with growing traffic around the world. So, speaking to some U.S. numbers, um, in probably the top ten major cities here in the U.S. The average American spends 240 plus hours a year stuck in their car. So when you break that down from a comparison to a work week, you know, that's somewhere in, in excess of about seven to eight work weeks, right? More time than they spend on holidays and causes businesses lost productivity, causes family issues. I mean, you, you name it. I think everybody could align with the uh, i'll say destructive nature that might sound a little dramatic but the destructive nature of just being stuck in traffic and sending several gallons of gasoline into the atmosphere and going nowhere so that's kind of like the big squishy vision of it from a practical standpoint we are building an aircraft that is an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft and um, we have some unique design aspects that we view as competitive strengths. So if you know about vertical takeoff, that falls into an area where thrust has to be greater than weight, and that can be very power consumption heavy. Now, particularly if you were to try and match that, so just to give you some rough numbers, right? If you want to be the bare minimum for thrust greater than weight, I would say you have to have 120% thrust to weight ratio. Otherwise, you'll have no real maneuver capability. If you want to be a fixed wing aircraft and use wingborne lift for flight, you probably need to be somewhere around the 25 to 30% thrust to weight ratio. So how do you match those two capabilities up and create one air, air vehicle? So that's what we're doing from a technical perspective. And the way we get after making that solution a little bit more palatable on the energy consumption is to use the channel wing and a few other design design things in there. No, How does that I, sound, Gary? Uh, oh, so, so, sounds like you've already said that before. It was a very long ride in that elevator, though. Um, but what I will say is um, you're, you're, you're obviously, I, I believe, are you a, a helicopter and fast jet driver or just uh, uh, what, what, what do you fly, Rory? Uh, mainly helicopters, but I'm qualified in, in uh, you know, from an FAA perspective, I guess, in commercial, uh, small commercial fixed wing multi-engine uh, planes, and then also all manners of helicopter, not fast jet. 
So you've, you, you have come from the genuine aviation world, and I, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but you see, you know what you're talking about with the flying part of things, so you know that part of the equation. I'm quite interested that you, I saw what, what caught my eye, uh, and if guys, if you go and have a look for uh, Rory and Hot Flight on um, LinkedIn, you'll see that you used a, and in fact, your, your website at the um, uh, hotflight.com, F-L-Y-T.com, um you used a bixler you you bent the wings of a bixler and that was your test machine yeah. so that that caught my eye and then made me look further and then and made me look at channel wings again something i had known about why did channel wings go away why why aren't they everywhere why are they solution why are they the solution i can put that very well i'll put it back to you all right i'll try to get to more of the elevator style uh speech i think like anything else they were challenged by the other technologies at the time to make them viable. Um, so one of the big things was if you were to really, and they did fly in the 50s for those that uh, don't know, and they flew quite successfully in a couple of test programs. But one of the, one of the things they struggled with was the uh, loss of directional stability in forward flight at low airspeed, okay? And the other thing that they struggled with was the high nose up attitude that the pilot would have to work with in order to uh, land the aircraft. So right. if you want right. to go into more more in depth explanation on that, but you know, essentially look at the tail section of an airplane as being a wing. And if I get that below stall, then I've got no directional stability. I can't keep the aircraft going, you know, nose pointed forward. And so the channel wing allows the aircraft to get really slow and still be airborne. Let me, I'm, I'm going to draw a, a, a diagram now for people that maybe can't get to the site. But really what we're talking about is, um, so I'm getting the whole 3D rendering machine out, is is, is a, a wing with a U in it. And then you, you put the prop in there. And I guess for your VTOL, you're going to swivel the whole lot uh, yeah. to, to, to go from, um, yeah, uh, vertical to horizontal flight. That, that's and, correct. And, you know, that design that you've drawn right there, and you're a fantastic artist, by the way, is a, uh, that, that was actually a fixed wing aircraft that flew like that first. So even in a fixed wing aircraft with normal fixed wing configuration, essentially what you're doing there is you're drawing a lot of air in over that aerodynamic shape, uh, you know, at low speed. So that creates a lot of wing on the lift, which is basically free lift, right? So that's, to, that's what you're doing in the bottom of this channel. Everything's getting dragged through there and you're giving yourself some advantage. Exactly. And then in order to accommodate vertical takeoff, we're just rotating it. And this is an EV toll, so it's going to be obviously electric. Uh, but yeah. it's quite, quite a big machine I'm looking at in your range. Now, how many people will it uh, carry? That is uh, designed for four and weighs about... Uh, 3,000 pounds, so somewhere on the order of maybe like 1,350 kilos. Wow. And yeah. what's the plan? To be completely autonomous or have a pilot sat in there for a while while regulations settle down? Or how's the plan? How's it going to go out of the gate? Yeah, I, it's going to go out of the gate with a pilot, and we put the what we call the hooks in the background for autonomous flying. I just see the regulatory barriers being an insurmountable task at this stage of our development game. Um, we kind of have to pick a few problems to solve and go after those rather than go after all of them. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah, you know, if you were to have an energy source that wasn't so constrained as batteries, then you wouldn't be worried about the pilot. You just pay for that in terms of energy cost. But from a, from a business perspective, if you want to drive the concept of profitability and earlier is like, well, now I've just got some fancy self-loading luggage. You know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> talking ballast. Uh, so it's yeah. a deliciously different design. Uh, I, I, I like it uh, very much uh, for that reason. Um, does anyone else want to jump in here? Because I'm, I'm monopolizing Rory here. Oh, me. Okay, okay. <laughs> over to Bruce. Here's trouble. Okay, perhaps you can explain to me how are you going to land this thing in a vertical mode? With any form of headwind because once it's in the tilted wing configuration you, you present an enormous profile to the oncoming airstream so if you're trying to land in a slightly windy day at a in a small area how are you going to bring that down without that frontal wind 
um, blowing it all around the place because I dare say the angle of your tilt is not going to be fast enough to cope with rapid changes in, air, in, in wind speed. No, that's a very good point and, and well recognized. Um, you know, we will have a lot of sailplane area uh, to contend with. One of the things that we've done from a control standpoint is we are actually tilting the wing um, and we're doing differential tilt on the wings and canards. Um, and then to the point where, so now I'm getting after it with direct thrust. So maybe yaw might be one of the weakest areas of control in something like a quadcopter configuration. And in a hover, we are not that different. So how do I, how do I get access to different degrees of freedom? By the way, I love some of your YouTube videos. I've used them quite a bit, so I appreciate that. Uh, I've forgotten your name, but I instantly recognized your face. Um, so that's a great question. Uh, so in, for example, for yaw, we'll do one wing, one canard will tilt in one direction and one wing and one canard on opposite sides will tilt in the other direction. That'll give us access to the, the direct thrust. Um, I, as an aircraft, it will still uh, suffer from some of the challenges of the environment and be like, hey, do we choose to land into the wind? Do we choose to land sideways to the wind and, and have this problem with the fuselage? Um, great questions. At some stage, testing will, will hopefully reveal some of those answers. I, I don't see it any different from other tilt wing designs that are out there and they would have to contend with it too. Um, but I think it's a very valid point. You also raise the, or you also put on your website, you say using contra-rotating propellers. Now I assume you're running each prop on the contra-rotating shaft with a separate motor. So you've still got some form of your control. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. But actually for us, for your control right now, and if you take a look, I don't, I haven't posted this, uh, video to our website, we actually went away from, let's say the traditional quadcopter varying uh, rotor speed for yaw control and went straight to differential thrust only, or not uh, differential wing incidents, I shouldn't say differential thrust. So basically changing the wing incident and, you know, that seems to be great for right now for the scale that we're at. Let's, let's see if that, I haven't anticipated any problems, but nobody ever does because then they wouldn't be problems as we grow in scale and we have size to deal with and higher disc loading to deal with, you know. Um, but and how would you, you know, rate the efficiencies over a more traditional craft like a helicopter? Helicopters are typically the urban transport vehicle of today. Um, yeah. So what, what are the benefits of, of this craft over, say, an electric helicopter? you know, it'll be forward flight speeds. I mean, when you get into electric helicopter or even, uh, you know, traditionally powered helicopters, you're working against large amounts of rotor drag. Additionally, with the traditional helicopter challenges from an operating cost perspective is can you get the operating cost down? So if you were to do electric helicopter and do that well, um, yeah, I, until you get lift on a wing, you're not going to get any real efficiency. So if you're doing electric helicopter, you're going to bump up against battery charge density. And there are some very successful designs out there. And by successful, I mean that they've demonstrated one, they can fly safely and two, they can carry people. I would look at whether it's Ehang 184 or I think the Surefire may be a hybrid system, but they're out there, right? They've, they've basically taken the the quadcopter or octocopter approach and scaled it up and, and work the reliability piece to put a person into it. At the same time, they're going to run into forward flight speeds of maybe 50 miles an hour and, you know, flight durations of probably somewhere on the order of 20 minutes. So and what about Kitty Hawk? Are they your biggest competition? No, I don't see Kitty Hawk as our, our biggest competition. I see companies like um, Lilium, I see companies like, well, I guess, yeah, I, I guess now when you say Kitty Hawk, I, I was thinking of their Kitty Hawk flyer, but I think more of Cora and or any of those other wingborne ones that are out there, right? So uh, my apologies there, that's probably, I, I jumped to conclusions on Kitty Hawk, but yeah, they're, I mean, being owned by Larry Page and he's got his fingers in about two or three different designs at one time. Um, yeah, they, they are are definitely viable competition and, and I know some of the test pilots working on those programs and they're they're very smart folks so one of yeah, my former colleagues a long, they're a long way along the path aren't they because um have you have you got your model going into transitional flight yet or are you still working on the hover stage no we have we have uh, into early stage transitional flight um we haven't got all the way there 
uh, in terms of like, hey, I can definitely say we're all the way in forward flight. That's one of my tasks right now is to write that test plan and go. And we've talked about different ways of approaching it. In other words, do I fix the aircraft into a kind of a fixed wing mode and then take off in as a fixed wing airplane and, and work through our different control strategy? Because you got to understand there are no elevators or ailerons on this aircraft and then try and hammer that out and then save the transition to last? Or do we start in a hover and just incrementally increase the airspeed and, and build out the test plan that way and then decide, okay, right about here's how we transition out of traditional, let's say, hover flight control laws that we've developed into forward flight control laws. So um, those are things. Yeah, things I think work the, on. the transition is, is, is very interesting because I've some of the delivery uh, drones that I've seen operating, uh, uh, the, the 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 way they transition out, they tend to come. A lot of them, several that I saw, went went straight up in the vertical. It took a long time. <laughs> they did it with the whole transition, and they they didn't do things like you might do in the helicopter, like back away from a confined area and land forward, or consider that and that sort of a thing. The, that that piece of, of transitioning of EV tolls, V tolls, delivery V tolls of all manner of sorts certainly has to be resolved in this trade it's very much being done we'll get above the ground and then go and it's very inefficient um to my mind sorry there's a bit of a rant but <laughs> so i'll be i'll follow the i'll follow the transit transition bit with interest after you bruce there, there are also other issues with transition but especially we got a, a dual wing a, a, a sort of canard issue as well because the real wing is going to be operating in a dirty airflow at some stage in the transition and is that a controllable part of the flight envelope if if suddenly the rear wing is blanketed and no longer operating will the aircraft simply pitch up and fall to the ground those things are quite critical and having worked on some craft like that before I can say there are some phases of a transition which I would be paying close attention to and, and I'd like to hear when you get past that point and you can do a safe reliable transition in all conditions yeah so to address a couple of your points there yeah here's a few things that I've seen from just my own research and then things that I know from seeing other aircraft that have transitioned uh, and, and worked through that phase so momentum flow as it comes in uh, through the channel uh, at some stage you know you can largely say hey we're in we're in static air and then we're now going to have we're going to change the inbound air vector and what does that do as i try and now bend that air down into the channel because we haven't tilted the wing forward that's one the the uh other piece that i've seen from Older aircraft that have gone through transition phases in the past as they tend to use leading edge devices on the wings, whether that slats to increase the lift um, as you go through there to prevent things like stall. Um, and NASA had a, a similar-ish design in, in the past. And what I've noticed is they tend to transition the rear wings, and I say wings and canards, but I mean the rear set of flight surfaces at faster speeds than the, than the front. And that is to prevent pitch up problems during transition so um there are it's by no means an easy task otherwise everybody would be doing it um and you know i think the points are are valid and uh what i'd say there is there are some advantages then to our design um you know we tend to think of an aircraft traditionally aligning with the flight surfaces in some sort of fixed mode but i mean i could i could take this aircraft off and have wind moving over the wings and just be accepting flat plate drag area of the fuselage and then get after transition in maybe maybe more conservative and benign ways you know so that's one of the advantages of being able to r rotate the wings like that is okay so what are the degrees of freedom i want to use and do i want to use them all you know or not you know so that's that's part of what our flight testing will reveal I'm muted. Crazy me and um, Chris in the comments. I for CD. Do they have a flying model? Yes, they do. They do. And and I don't know if you've have you gone beyond what we've seen on your channel. I'll put the channel again for those that are joining. Are there more um, models, uh, Rory? There are. We we actually have. We're in about six months. We'll complete a, a build of a hundred pound prototype, and, um, and then we also have already started the fuselage molds for a our you know full-size manned prototype aircraft so um there's a couple of other things bruce that i didn't address in your question 
uh, regarding the impingement of vortices on the aft wing. And all I'd like to say there, well, I won't talk about all of our secret sauce. We'll probably raise the aft wing on our larger scales so that is higher than the front, but there's a few other things we've done as well to, to at least address that problem. Hey, uh, are you back with us, Bruce? He's dropped out in one window and he's there with another. You're also muted. Yeah, I know. If some, see if my network connection was lost and then it threw me off and now I'm here to off, oh, just disappeared. I'm yeah. back again. <laughs> <laughs> it's so confusing. My head's spinning. What's going on? <laughs> Uh, research here is also uh, asking, yeah, there is flight video. If you look, uh, I've, I've put the link above your comment there. If you look in there, fer ferret around in their website and you'll you'll find you'll find evidence. You'll find evidence of this. And that, yeah, I saw it, I, I saw it on LinkedIn and I thought, oh, this is interesting. This is different. Um, not going down the normal route. Uh, when do you, when, when, will, when will Uber be purchased them from you, Rory? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what they're doing. Um, so not trying to openly disparage other folks, uh, but so they partnered with Bell Helicopters, one of their many partners. And then Bell came out with what I would consider a rather disappointing design. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> so I, 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 you know, I, I just leave it at that. It was like, okay, you, you're not really solving any of the problems that people asked. Um, which is mainly get off the gasoline uh, and you know anyway so not sure what their play is on it I mean and James, James I, in the comments for you Rory James Dunthorne's asking uh, what is your certification strategy I, I'm sorry you, you broke up a little bit there what is my something strategy so what uh, James Dunthorne's asking or what is your certification strategy and what standards will the aircraft be built to now that's a great question um, I think a lot of that is currently in flux right now I think we will go you know we're gonna just build the first one and probably something that can carry a uh, a passenger, so at least, at least a two-person aircraft, and do it under the experimental strategy, and then fly that extensively to prove out the concept. As far as getting the aircraft certified for commercial operations, um, you know that. I guess what I'll say is that could be a huge money pit endeavor. So some of some of our look at that was to be a fast follower. In other words be a Facebook, not a Friendster, or uh, what was it, MySpace. Um, I know the FAA here in the US is changing their approach to small aircraft, FAR Part 21, and a few other things. So, and then part of it is like, I got to solve some of my big problems first, and then some of my big problems later. And, and that's a big problem later, right? Um, just, so, Maybe not a complete and satisfying answer, James, uh, but that's that's the reality of what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. With, perhaps a more, perhaps a more um, urgent problem will be, have you got um, approval from the FAA for your 100 pound model since it exceeds the 55 pound that's allowed under other regulations? Do you see that as being an issue? Uh, I don't see it as being an issue in terms of uh, getting approval to fly it. Uh, there are plenty of places here where we work where similar experimental models can fly so um but yeah it's it's a concern as we get to that so now how do i get an operator how do i get them certified how do i get the aircraft certified and registered with the fa and i've, I've taken the preliminary look into that you know some of the first pieces to get around that could be to do some of the decent testing where it was still tethered to the ground um, like we've done in some of our recent ones so um, even that goes a long way before we even get let's say free flying and airborne but uh, that's also a valid thing that we've got to get after and and have you been inspired by ken muller <laughs> <laughs> i i don't uh, ken muller i'm sorry i'm not familiar you don't know who ken muller is the the, the inventor of the flying car um, investigated by the FBI oh, said hundreds of millions okay. of dollars. Yes. Yeah, M-O-E-L-L-E-R. I'm sorry, it, it, it didn't quite come uh, through clearly on the uh, on the hangouts here. Um, no, I haven't, although I did meet one of his, I guess, partners slash employees slash protégés at the last Uber Elevate conference. And uh, um, 
yeah, I mean, I don't know why he was maybe a little ahead of his time, you know. Oh, good so, answer. Good, good answer. Good answer, yeah. Rory. Uh, <laughs> let me, uh, oh, you were at that Uber Elephant. Oh, I don't want you to say anything yet. <laughs> How was the feeling in, in the room at Uber Elevate? Was it sensible heads or was it shiny look at these new thing heads yeah gosh i should be careful what i say yeah here, sorry I don't, don't 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 let me lead you down a garden path sorry no, i mean look it's my personal opinion i i'm a bit of a tech guy right i like the techie side of stuff i like solving the technical challenges i heard a lot of business fluff on that stuff and all of that needs to happen it's not bad stuff so please don't interpret it that way it's just you know and i can see right there they look at the world through how do i grab as much market share as i can and then you know the the challenges with big business is they get constrained by how they deploy their capital you know they're not they're they're responsive to a different boss and if they so they're weighing the risk against the benefit and they're they're always conservative um in that case yeah you know i didn't see as much on the tech side as i want i'm actually more interested in going to the new vertical flight society formerly known as ahs those conferences um and i've had some of my colleagues here re uh present at aiaa and and, and those kinds of places to me, that's more appealing. You know, sure. I, I will probably, if I had to be open and honest, I guess I would be, and I would do this if I was somebody else, I would transition me out of the company when it is at that stage where it's got to become a business as opposed to an experimental aircraft development company. You know, I can't have all skill sets, right? Mine are in flight test and aviation and on the design side with the team. I'm, you know, and you, it works great for right now, right? You you but post a lot from uh, I see a lot of posts about um, your 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 temp test pilots at school. There, are, are you a test yeah. pilot as well? I am indeed. Yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the executive officer of Una United States Naval Test Pilot School. Well, that's, so. that's 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 quite a good thing to fish out of you, isn't it? That's quite a good qualification to have in this world. Well, good, well, yeah, you're not it worthy. Might be. <laughs> that just means I'm a regular pilot that's done a little bit of math, you know. I mean, the, you know, despite sure, I mean, it, despite the Lord, what's that? It, it does give you a practical head, a very practical head when testing this sort of thing, and perhaps the ability, also a trained ability, to walk away if you think, "Well, oh, none of this is going to work," whereas other people might not continue. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to work, but you know, yeah. a more measured approach to everything. Yeah. I, I would hope so. Otherwise, uh, the Marine Corps spent a lot of money on a bad education. <laughs> no, well, we, I, well, yeah, we've definitely got to, with the with with um the head of test pilot school, as it were, or test pilot land uh, at, at the helm. Uh, it's got to be one to watch, and we will keep watching with very great interest. Um, yeah. would you, if you've got time, would you stay with us and argue with us now as we move on through another couple of um topics to the top of the hour yeah uh, i don't know if i can stay to the top of the hour let me just double check sure. here on time no no, no worries you you yeah. if you have to go you, you go and um, what that that's all good i, 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 I understand you on duty yeah um i will try and hang out for another few minutes because i'm i'm very interested in what you guys are talking about so um well that's very it's very kind of you because I've got to go pick up my kids. Ah, <laughs> the, the real, ah, the real work. You mean? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. All right, let's let's get back to Ian. Um, Ian, now you discovered something last Friday about a little change in the UK regs uh, that we all know they're coming out, and it's not as a result of the Gatwick incident, which I see cost uh, one of the airlines they're reckoning fifteen million quid. Um, uh, it was all on 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 the cards anyway what did you find out last friday ian yeah i must admit i wasn't the <clears throat> i wasn't the first person to spot it but i was probably one of the first to actually delve in and figure out what was going on so i've just seen a comment to say there'd been an update to the wording of the consultation document so i thought i'd better delve in and see what the impact of that is and it's quite a significant one so it's been done under the guise of a mistake and it might be it might not be um you've always got to be concerned you know are these 
changes under um, sort of political duress. So we, we had the situation where it said that we were going to have an extended uh, ATZ and the restricted zone was going up to, it's between 4.6 and 5 kilometres, depending on where, whether the end of the um, runway. Um, so we knew that was happening, but what it, what it said originally was drones under, well, basically, if your drone was over 250 grams, you were uh, caught with the zone. Uh, if, if it was under uh, 250, uh, well, 250 or under, then you would not have to uh, concern yourself with that extended zone. So that's the bit of wording that they've changed. So they basically said that a small drone is any drone from zero to 20 kilograms, and they'll all be affected by the um, new extended zone. So it could be a mistake from the viewpoint of they might think, oh, we've created a loophole because we've made the ATZ so that you could fly a 250 to it. So you wouldn't want that. But you don't have to change the word and say it captures all drones. You could have left one kilometer as it is now, catch all for all drones. That's your safety buffer. And then for the, the remainder of it from one kilometer up to five kilometers, you could then say, well, if your drone's uh, above 250, then you're still going to have to consult us. Because what we've got a situation now is that you can have toy drones. So but, uh, here's where we get my very uh, basic drawing. And uh, so here's Timmy, and he's in his detached house with his mum, and he wants to fly his little toy drone that's about the size of a, you know, size of a biscuit. Um, <clears throat> and now what's going to happen is his mum's going to have to call up air yeah. and say, can I have permission to fly that? And then when he's finished flying it and he's charged up another battery and he's out again, it's, can I have permission to fly that? And so on. And obviously, they might be nice. They might be saying, yes, you can. But they might be, uh, you know, they might say, oh, we're fed up if you call him to fly your drone all the time. No, he can't. Um, <laughs> that's the situation with it. And I don't think anyone has actually thought about the impact of that. You know, how many, I mean, for starters, even your 250 drone pilots, the, the flying little races, the flying it, uh, you know, between trees, through obstacles, that's their kind of flying, not flying it up in the sky to be bothering air traffic. So you've got, obviously, your 250s, but stuff below 250, you know, a lot of that um, wouldn't fly particularly well outside anyway. It's the kind of thing where someone, you know, they, they might risk it in the garden, but they probably wouldn't risk it much further because it could get blown away by the wind. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's just like, I mean, would does air traffic control really need to know about a drone this size or smaller? I'd, you know, do they even want to know about it? And do they want the workload? Has no. anybody asked them? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Well, is, isn't isn't it the perfect lead into the fin system? And I've forgotten what the what that acronym means. But isn't that what they want to drive us towards? Is uh, an app based reporting system? Isn't this leading the way into that? They do in the end, but given we know that's on hold for the time being, that given the consultation, everyone was so against it. You know, that might be two, three, four, five years away for all we know. Um, so, you know, should we be burdening, because um, it's a burden actually for the drone pilot and it's a burden for air traffic control as it as it's been proposed at the moment. Um, well, and, 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 and in, in the diagram that, that, that you displayed, your rendering there, uh, it's uh, Timmy's mum as well, um, because she is actually then responsible um, for that flight and overseeing young Timmy and his safe operation of the aircraft, I think, is she not? Is she? Who is responsible? Timmy's well, Timmy would have taken the test, wouldn't he? Timmy's taken the test to say that he's uh, say that he's covered. Yeah, I mean, this is where the confusion had come in the consultation. I think what they were trying to clarify because what we were worried about at first was young kids not being allowed to fly drones, and then what they clarified was kids were going to be allowed to fly drones, but it became kind of the parent would have to buy it and own it, and so essentially responsible. So if we accept that that's the logic, then the logic to me would be that the parent are probably more likely to call. I mean, air traffic control are going to probably be even more annoyed if they've got some, you know, six-year-old kid on the <laughs> calling them up. Um, so they, they, they probably prefer it was a, an adult. But, yeah, it does bring into question. I mean, I don't believe anyone, when they're thinking about legislation, has really thought of that scenario. I'm thinking, is that really the best use of everyone's time and, 
the the, the legislation you really what you should be more concerned about is um your mavics and even then they're fairly alive but yeah you'd be more concerned about your phantoms your inspires um those kind of crap um, no 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 I'm not, I'm not concerned about them at all what am i concerned about there's a fixed wing airplane i'm concerned about oh tundras that's what i want to see gone i want to see tundras gone because you are very topical because the chap the chap that was arrested well not arrested uh was brought in for an incident on uh christmas eve in the uk just outside of heathrow was actually and some people are saying he might have been a bmfa member as well but anyway uh he was flying a model airplane not a drone at all shocking yeah i mean with that i mean i, I don't know if anyone's confirmed it would be my but he did say he was part of a flying club for certain um he's he's been daft that in that he's he's flown uh, close enough to an airport especially with what's going on though he said he didn't know what was going on uh, i think he's from outside the uk originally and so he, he, he might have used it See, i'm not really familiar with the language maybe or something i don't know um but yeah he said he wasn't aware which i think would be fairly tough not to be aware with it the way it was on the news but anyway um he's gone out and he's flown his plane he's happened to be spotted and so he's been made in fairness though he has been made an example of if that had happened mm -hmm. uh, earlier on in the year um well we know already because we had the drone that was near the prime minister and you know the guy was just told off so i think ha previously he'd have just got a slap on the hand and now they've had to make an example of somebody so that it can be cited as example of saying watch yourselves or that's the minimum of what's going to happen to you absolutely and uh while well, louis said not knowing the law is no excuse it's true but louis where he was flying you can see the fins of the aircraft over the back of the hotel <laughs> it's in taxiing around the runway at heathrow he's right on the right on the other side of the, the hotels of the ring road oh yeah bruce says yep. now now you know uh -oh. i like to have a go uh -oh. at regulators yes but you know really? so i'm going to uh -oh. talk about here in new zealand now i sent you a link gary to a video did you get that of the shielded operation a shielded operation uh, that was the um the very well um the yeah what well, he yeah. would have been a shielded operation on the the other side of, uh, it, it, the biggest belief that regulators have this oh we're not going to use this regulation because someone else thought of it first and in new zealand caa for all its faults has done an extremely good job at dealing with this whole issue of flying small craft like timmy with his little drone near airports and they've come up with this thing called a shielded operation which means basically if you're flying under the trees or you're flying within 100 meters of a tall object and don't exceed the height of that object then you're not going to be a danger to aircraft so they've said you can do this right up to the boundary of an airport so long as you follow this shielded operation um, requirements and it means that suddenly we don't have a problem with airports being an issue for kids with their toys and it's a brilliant thing it's worked perfectly well i've not heard of one instance where people have abused this or where it's caused a problem so it's a solution to the problem that all regulators have got but as far as i'm aware it's only the new zealand civil aviation authority that has this policy or this regulation other countries have probably said oh that's a brilliant idea but we didn't think of it so we're not going to do that we're going to find kids two and a half thousand quid for flying outside their houses you know um 2.49 nautical miles from an air traffic control zone um this is you know crazy so can you post that link on the thing for anyone i'll have to get, uh, have to get, get me email the video open, is good. and i'll say the concept uh, is good you know it, yeah it is i'm just going to thank mad rc uh flight information and notification service Thank you very much for noting that. And I'm going to disappear off and find Bruce's video on my email list here. Um, but it, when is the UK going to settle down, Ian? Uh, is, is, it die, is it falling away from the news? Is this the beginning of people forgetting? No, I think this is start of uh, 2019. Um, being a year of hysteria, I reckon. I mean, it's, the House of Lords are having a, a meeting today and... From what i've seen posted about what was um being said from that it sounds like they're talking about um you know applying the law as quickly as possible and to the full extent that we can so i mean as long as we've got a situation where sightings can be made and are not evidenced it, it's it's just going to continue on now given we know the airports are getting the counter uas in um hopefully once they've all got that it, it will then settle down but as long as the police investigation is going on and there's no conclusion 
I don't think things will settle down until after that, until the, the police say, we've got someone on this, they admit and say, we didn't have enough evidence, but we've, we've done all we can. I mean, we've, we've heard this in, in, the, in the last few weeks, for example. Um, it's, the police have said they've got about 60 people of interest. Um, but I've seen comments already, that includes commercial operators, and one of them has said he was specifically um, had a visit from the police because his neighbour has issues with him and had uh, deliberately named him for getting a visit. So that, that seems to be the, 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 the quality of the, the police's information effectively is that they're relying on calls in of people saying, I think it's Joe Bloggs and the people that are calling those calls in simply don't like the neighbours. You know, they've had an issue over parking, um, you know, boundaries of property or they've seen them flying the drone and don't like it. And that's what's driving it. So unfortunately, I think it'll get to the end and the police will be able to say to the government, well, we've done our job because we've got all these people, we've done all the reports, we've done all the, um, I don't want to use interrogations because that's the media word, which isn't what it is. It's interviews. Um, you know, they're going, you know, it doesn't sound, it does sound now that since the that original couple, that, you know, it, it's a lot calmer, you know, it's going in and just having a reasoned conversation saying, you know, did you have your job there? Uh, and if, if you've got any doubts, you know, can we see your logs? And I think that's as far as it's going. Um, and so it will basically, it will run its course. But until all that's done and dusted, um, I think it will continue on. And it's going to continue on as long as Balper um, keep making a fuss over things, which, that, that, I mean, really, uh, I, I don't know for what drives them. Only Balper knows that. I mean, obviously, people have got the concern of thinking, maybe they just want to halt the drone industry because they know, you know, one of the first things that will probably be automated in, in general aviation when they can do so is, you know, cargo planes between countries and so on. And obviously that can go from drone technology. But even killing drones completely in the UK will not stop any of that because that's global development. Most of that's not happening in the UK anyway. So whatever restrictions we get in the UK, the, you know, the world's going to continue on and you can't halt technology. It, it, the, but ultimately things will happen that are going to happen. Yeah, yeah, no, you, no, you're right. You're, you're, you're bobbing right about the developments happening, and the the big hope, a big hope of the bigger part of the industry is that the first big unmanned cargo flights will be to between very remote places in China to very remote places in Australia, just to give it a go with second hand seven four sevens and stuff like that. There's people seriously looking into that, and it could happen. Could happen very, very easily, couldn't it? Um, and then eventually those places won't be so remote as it were you know it'll, it'll be in and out in normal airport now uh, yes uh mad rc says that um things will never be the same we've been victimized now it just won't go back the public are now heightened to it and ops are getting regularly questioned and someone says that bruce looks like witty bulger i have no idea who that is but there we are no, <laughs> he looks like me i was there first you were there first. Well, I'm. I am going to have to spend a great deal of time on Google. Um, yeah, it's a shame, and uh, it's a shame that it was a model aircraft. Well, that's a bit controversial, isn't it? <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, well, the, one, the one, the one thing with the model aircraft, though, the, the one the silver lining out of that, it did give me a laugh for a minute because it, what had happened in the UK. Now, I think it was bang out of order, very childish, pathetic, and it shouldn't have happened. Was when we had all the the kickoff in the media with Gatwick and Heathrow, um, there was some sort of meme that was done by the uh, um, BMFA, you know, that basically said um, uh, our members are responsible and it's all down to the drone flyers, uh, effectively. And obviously today is proven it's it's the, they're they're no better. If you've got individuals in control the model, it, it can be either party. Um, but frankly, like as we've said, I still think he's been made. A, a an example of but it, it brought it on himself yeah yeah absolutely um common sense says don't fly over the fence from Heathrow. just just because well if nothing else if it flies over the fence and you say mister can I have my ball back you're gonna have a hell of a conversation to have with the guys aren't you yes yeah. <laughs> but you know at the same time people have flown uh in, within the Class A airspace around London, uh, there's loads of model aircraft clubs in Richmond. There's one, there is one, actually, there is one. 
There is one. Hang on. Hang on. Just just wait a minute while I crinkle. There's one on the map, I think, if I remember rightly. There's one uh, wrong size. There's one, one to 500. One to 25. Yeah, I know. There's one. There is one just north of, of the runway. Um, a little a little bit further north. But um, is, it, is, is that the new LG tablet with the foldable screen? Yeah, <laughs> it, is, it is. It is. It is. It's with the shiny surface. It's, it's <laughs> very old school. Um, it's the issue with the when the zones extended. It will pick up, uh, you know, playing fields, um, spaces, you know, possibly even you know, genuine model clubs. So that's it's going to create yeah. Yeah. a real headache. And no one's put a number to it, but there were a few people having a go today. So um, the, the, the from the internet to and fro, that be people being posted, and they reckon it's going to be hundreds of thousands of properties that are picked up with it. Someone has said. Um, in Cambridge, they reckon it would be uh, it, it, in the scale of maybe 50,000. So they're looking at like, how many residential properties does it pick up, you know, excluding the fact of, um, you know, council, uh, parkland or wherever else you might be able to fly. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the, the impact is, but it does come across that no one's really gone away and done that analysis. Uh, it's not good. It's not good for the hobby, is it? It's not good. Nicholas falling asleep. He has it. Has he fallen asleep? See if we can wake him up. Oh, yeah. he's there. He's there. Oh, I thought he was asleep. Damn. I thought we could have said something to him. Nicola, what's on your build bench? You've been very quiet. You need to unmute yourself, mate. Yeah, waiting patiently for you to stop laughing yeah. about regulations. <laughs> Definitely could fall asleep after the day that I've had. Uh, yeah, and well, you, I saw you did a battery video recently. Uh, what, yeah. what, what's, what, what have you got to review? What's coming up in your reviews <laughs> of flying? Uh, actually, I went flying yesterday. Finally, it wasn't the best of days because forecast promised full sun, and the reality was that probably there was full sun above the clouds. <laughs> Somewhere, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was covering. Somewhere. Yeah, I were covering everything around. So I flew the new Phoenix 2400, the 2.4 meter wingspan one. And I also flew the new Ranger with the exact same wings. I used one set of wings for both planes. Okay. And so out of the same mold then? What? Out of the same mold then, the wings, it would seem. Yeah. Not Keeping one of the sets as a spare didn't feel like uh, putting new servos in it if if it's the same thing on both planes. And uh, the Phoenix did perform exceptionally well. I'm very happy with it. Be careful what you're saying now. Are you going to mention any speeds? Because some people will take any positive reviews of anything as, 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 <laughs> as, 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 as not the best. No, no. True. <laughs> It's true. It's true. I have the, uh, the 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 Phoenix V2, which is the two meter one. It's the smaller one, and actually, I don't know why, but this one, uh, for some reason, can take a much larger battery up front, and that that would allow a much much longer flight time because. Uh, right now, I have a lithium-ion battery, and that's that's three times the capacity of the of the biggest battery I was able to use in the V2 one, in the smaller one. And that was still not enough to balance the plane. I had to put every canopy that it comes with and another camera on the nose in addition to that. Wow. But, okay. Yeah. But you'll see in the video, I hope to uh, be able to have it done by the end of the week but you'll not be you're still in winter up there aren't you so you're yeah. what time of year is it yeah <laughs> it's january isn't it yeah. so you're, you're a little bit away from thermaling weather yet uh actually if there's if there's sun i can do that at least around the city where there are buildings that got metal roofs that tend to heat up but otherwise, I have no idea. It doesn't really matter. The plane is pretty awesome. I wasn't able to actually get over the clouds. I did try. Got the camera pretty wet. <laughs> actually got the whole plane pretty wet. It was <laughs> dripping water when it landed. <laughs> mm, yeah, I don't know. Um, 
I'm mm. pretty lucky nothing burned out, but the run cam too I had on the nose was uh, something was glitching there. I think the Wi-Fi uh, the Wi-Fi module might have gotten a bit wet because the the Wi-Fi uh, LED was going crazy, but the recording was still going strong. So I haven't checked it yet, but will do. But I just love that point of view from from the rudder to the front of the plane and the, uh, uh, one engine, yeah that is chair, actually yeah. yeah that's my point of view on that plane absolutely stunning absolutely stunning and does that help with uh, you know like the seeing roll and all that sort of a thing you know a much better idea of, of how the aircraft is <sighs> Yeah, I think it does because you actually see what the what the what the plane is doing. If you if you have the FPV camera in the nose without seeing anything from the plane, it's you know the whole image starts shaking or you know rolling sideways when the plane does, and it could be stressful if it's not voluntary. <laughs> I mean, you're flying and a gust of wind sort of throws the plane off. And it's that instant rush of adrenaline. Oh my God, something's happening. And then it's stabilized and you go, oh, all right. But here, it doesn't matter because you actually see the whole plane. And no uh, matter what happens to it, you you can see the horizon, you can see the plane, and you know it's there, it's in one piece, which which is important. <laughs> and uh, you uh, I, have you got an autopilot in it, or is it just hand flying yeah. at the moment? Of course. <laughs> what are you gonna be doing without an autopilot? I don't know. Well, well, I move I mean, everything. Bruce might have uh, something to say about that, but um, and what uh, what are you using? Because I, uh, I, uh, I I I I I kind of was thinking about using this here, um, Sparky Two, but I am in the market for one of the new smaller boards. Which new smaller smaller all in board should I get? What I is the moved. choice? I moved over every single bit of electronic I had on the V2. I just moved it over servos, ESC, everything over to the uh, bigger plane. And it's it's the exact same plane, it's only bigger. And for some reason it's it's better. So what, what, Even, what board are you using? I guess I gotta write it down. Uh, it's an omnibus F4 Pro running okay. out of plane. <clears throat> uh, F4 Pro. Yeah, it was running on the smaller plane, and right now it's running on the big plane. It did a mission, uh, one of my special missions. Special mission. Special yeah. mission. <laughs> and, uh, Drawing something in the sky, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. And the um, in, in the other little video I made about choosing that, in the comments somebody has said, uh, well, what's all this noise about? Um, the R9 receivers and all that sort of thing. So can I leave it to you gentlemen to explain what those FR Sky receivers are all I'm, about? I'm surprised there's somebody out there that doesn't know <laughs> what's with these receivers because there's been so much talk about this thing. Actually, the, uh, the Phoenix has an L9R in it because that's what I, uh, what I had in it uh, in the small one and I just moved everything over, but the Ranger, being you know, hardcore FPV design, blah blah, whatever, and hopefully being able to carry a larger battery because I did fly it with a Forest 10,000 milliamp hour LiPo, which is heavy, for sure, uh, especially compared to the lithium ion I put in the rain in the uh, Phoenix, but. Uh, I don't have, actually, I don't have an autopilot in the Ranger yet, but I do have an HD FPV system in it. One that we've heard about? Mm, yeah, it's the new R2 Tech uh, DVLC thing. It's <clears throat> it's actually got a, uh, a recording module on board the transmitter, so you can use it as an FPV camera and you can record the video <clears throat> so you don't have to put a second camera up there just for that and it does come with its own camera but i don't think you can use another one just what whatever it comes with but i do have the r9 receiver on that plane which is why i was 
confident to fly it out to probably five or six hundred meters just line of sight because i really wasn't able to trust the uh the hd system <laughs> so i was just I was just eyeballing the plane at all times but i i went out pretty far it's a huge plane i mean 2.4 meters with these wings pretty big and you can see it from afar but the the only thing i was confident about on board that plane was the r9 slim plus receiver uh and not a single glitch yeah it's a short distance for that system because that thing can probably go tens of kilometers but still not having an autopilot is a bit unnerving especially for, for someone like me that likes to equip everything with an autopilot it just peace of mind you know Mm, absolutely, and Ian's talking about the um, uh, that egg thing, the Power Vision Power Egg drone in the comments. I don't think it's arrived in most places, actually. And I, I saw it years ago. I don't, I don't think it's around. Um, uh, uh, Unbox Warehouse has done apparently dressed like a huge chicken has done an unboxing of said drone. It's in the comments. All the details you need on that. Not you also, sure. Not sure I've even ever heard of that before. It was the thing that had the uh, the legs that folded down. I can't quite remember how it worked. Yeah, I mean, it, oh, was, it, was, it was shaped like an egg, and then yeah, arms would come out of it, which would then be your arms. Oh yeah, 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 and yeah, 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 yeah. Bottom, and then it would it, it had the uh, gimbal at the bottom. <clears throat> I'm not I sure. I think what we're saying it uses the uh, um, the yaw in action to to turn the gimbal like a, a few copters do these days. Yes, that was yeah. right. And now, Bruce, how I are you? Got one of them here. You got, oh, they are. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> but that's not the that's not the big one. That's the. No, that's Looking the like that's the new one. Everything the big one has in a smaller package. Absolutely, and just in time for Easter. Do you know what? There's, there's yeah. Easter eggs and there's Easter eggs in the shop in town today. <laughs> oh, and there's yeah. flipping Easter eggs in there. Anyway, yeah, look at that. Uh, One press uh, of a button and it unfolds. <laughs> it's got like it's got an endurance of an hour. Yeah. Atomic egg. Yeah, yeah. Cold fusion. And an HD link. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that little thing. Follow, follow me mode, circle things, uh, <laughs> zoom That's out shots. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, just yeah. Small, enough, small enough to swallow. You could call it the pilly drone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you can oh, make oh. coffee too. You can make coffee now. Look, yeah. when Nathan Eck turns up in the comments and he says, "Beware about something," you click the link. So I've clicked the link. I've switched. I've now switched off the. I've probably switched off the whole thing. Now he's saying, "Beware of D shot and BL heli esque tele telemetry support. Uh, S are burning out and in flight reboots. So if you are, if that is of use to you, I suggest you click the link, dear viewer. Hot off the press. Moral of the story: Do not update the. Yeah, I yeah. Right. My fan was not here. I've moved the Phantom because I'm going to move the office room next door. But I've never updated my Phantom. There's loads of stuff I've never updated. I beat this updated thing, Malarkey. Beat it's surprising me. they still work. Funny old thing, isn't it? Once yeah. once you've got something working, leave it. <laughs> don't yeah, moral of the story is, if it works, don't fix it. Yeah, do not yeah. fix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's very very true. Uh, nothing to do with updating hardware, hardware only, multi-star S. Sorry, Nathan. <laughs> We're in trouble now. We've been told off. <laughs> Bruce, you're also an R6 fan, I believe. Or oh, R9. the R9. Yeah, I've got um, R9. Uh, some of the R9 stuff. My original R9 Slim they sent me didn't work, broken out of the box. But I've since then got an R9 Mini, which seems to be the bee's knees. The only problem we've got with the, the Free Sky stuff at the moment is everything has to be on the same version. and when you get it, the first thing you could do is update it. And some people, I think, are going to be a bit hesitant because they don't like playing with firmware. They don't want to brick their device. So I think they could pop free sky. And they don't have an RF update, too. I mean, I don't know why, but on the R9 stuff, you can't just put the SD card in your transmitter, press a button, and have it update the receiver through the radio link without having to mess around with cables and wires and things. So they need to be a bit more polished in how they're handling the R9 stuff. It's really it's great, but they could do better. And um, 
I'm going to be reviewing a whole lot more 250 grams, sub 250 gram stuff because it seems to be the future of the hobby. And you were talking about flight controllers. I've got a 20 mil flight controller coming, 20 millimeters rather than the 35, yeah, whatever it is. Okay, yeah. um, and that's got a barometer and so forth. So I'm going to review that as a part of a very small FPV setup. And I've got a big bag of bits arrived today, which I'll be unpacking and some more good stuff in there. And But the trouble is we've had some really crap weather here. It's like it's been 10 degrees in the morning, which is like winter temperatures in the middle of summer. And we've had a constant um, westerly, it was 34 kilometres an hour yesterday. And as I was driving out to the airport this morning, I was following a cloud shadow. I was doing 40k and the shadow was moving away from me. So it's pretty windy here at the moment. It's a real pain in the backside. But I'm going to get this flying in the next day or so. This is a Radjet 420. It'll be fully FPV'd and uh, no flight controller, but I'm not would a that, snowflake like Nicole. I can fly without yeah. a flight controller. <laughs> would, would, that gain, would that gain under 250 or is it a bit much with the battery? It's, it's way under. It's way, way under. Is it? I have the, the scales that don't show the blood here. I will, I will measure it as we speak. Here we go. Just a moment, please. That's 63 grams without a battery, and the battery wow. is... And that's got battery further, is it? 12 grams. So we're looking at 75 grams or so for the airframe. And all I've got to go in there is just a, twin, no, just a little FPV transmitter and receiver and we're done. And that, they came to, I think, about 12 grams or something in total. So well, oh. well, well under the um, 250 grams. And this is a really fast little model too. Don't forget the autopilot and the antenna tracker board and the OSB. Oh, you snowflake. And the veto <laughs> capability. <laughs> Oh, Vito, you no. thing up. <laughs> <laughs> and did you see the FPV world speed record broken by Rupert in the UK? Was it 260 miles an hour or something, 265? Unbelievable. Oh, he's just another level, isn't he? He's just, he's just, he's probably not all there. But <laughs> we've had him on. We must get him on again. I did ask him uh, a couple of weeks ago when he was given a go and then... Uh, uh, and he was he was worried that he wasn't going to make the speed he thought he was going to, and he didn't because he had that battery sag uh, issue. Um, so I'll invite I'll invite him back. I still think his Spitfire videos are the best. But anyway, yeah. that's it's, just me. I'm just a though, with the new regulations, which will basically kill his um, his flying because he does beyond visual line of sight and and above in his speed values he has to go above 120 meters um he's basically said he's not going to reach it he's just going to bow out of the hobby which is really sad because it's showing the effect the the really bad unintended consequences of these stupid regulations and speaking to the the british ones or the english ones that that ian was talking about you just know you just know with this unintended consequence that little jimmy's mum's gonna have to be on the phone to atc every five minutes you just know that these are people who know nothing about the subject that they are regulating and it's politically driven i think so we've got politicians don't know a clue about what they're talking about not telling other people how to do things that, that is a recipe for disaster non-compliance and you know mayhem yes one well, wonders what the sales are going to be like at christmas of tiny toy wonder if, if argos and all the big shops whatever they are in the uk these days tesco's are just going to remove any air hogs any sort of little model airplane off off the off the shelves really because at some point maybe they'll be in the loop for responsibility or something like that so it's just not worth the bother yeah it's terrible it's terrible um fpv says fpv steve says press f to show respect to rupert's batteries oh, i'll do that i'll do i'll press f but um yeah rupert is another level he's at he's actually another level a super chap as well um so he, he really is a super chap and that will get him on again anyway look we've gone over three minutes over the hour so i'm gonna call I must get a bell or a gavel and i'm gonna say before we go does anyone else have anything else before we go going once is it worth um, just mentioning uh, just because i noticed a bit of confusion online with it about the blue cube um oh yeah 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 um, yeah yeah for archer pilot because um what's happened and you jump in if you can explain any better um but hex the the manufacture the cube because there's a requirement now i think in the us for military and government where they're having drones to have them built to the us so that they can verify them for security um they're now building one of the cubes uh, in a us plant so that's the blue cubes so it doesn't offer you any additional functionality 
it's just giving you the ability where you can sell that to government because they'll have the peace of mind that it can't have been tampered with unfortunately because it's built in the us obviously it can't be manufactured as cheap so i think it's about four times the price but having said that if you're building a drone for government uh, that is still very very cheap money compared to the, the alternatives out there i I've, I've just felt louis punch you from afar because louis not? just said in a comment he just said cubes are not hard you pilot so yeah the cubes are i mean, I mean you've run the archer pilot on it yeah. <laughs> it's just so you just buy the red cube and paint it and you can sell it for four times as much that's a brilliant piece of marketing which one do you want yeah which, yeah what are we going to do now that dji drones will be so much cheaper oh yes they're going to be 20 percent cheaper aren't they you're exactly. right i've forgotten that yes after the little scandal and that's one of those annoying things where i pick that up off a chinese newspaper on friday and everyone else is just like all over the weekend it's like the latest news and we've run that ages before. anyway but yes i'm not quite sure how that con works uh it seemed like that some guys perhaps 100 as many it's interesting the the other newspapers are saying it's sort of topped at 50 but the original report said it's possibly up to 100 people uh, were involved but over overcharging i guess internally i don't know how, how do we think it might have worked you're not going to offer any no, yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's probably, it's, they're probably um yeah obviously someone was loading up the, the the bill of materials or something with a whole lot of extra charges so there must be some very wealthy people who used to work for dji well, 100 and wasn't it 147 million US dollars or something like that? That's I mean, a million bucks a pop or something over a million bucks a pop they would have got if it was shared out evenly. Was 100 people, yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, one thing I do feel a bit sorry for DJI with that in that the, the way the story is being presented, the headlines, it makes it sound like DJI themselves are being corrupt when it's of course, that is actually staff internally that say it sounds like I've really ripped them off. And unfortunately, all, all companies experience that. The, 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 the reality is it just very, very rarely gets into the press. It's, I guess it's just the fact that it's such a scale of it that you could simply not hide it. But and and the big bonus is there'll be lots of spare corneas on the Chinese market now with all these people being... <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but there's the, the, always a silver lining. Oh, absolutely. But if, if anything, I, my takeaway from it was that it underlines just how big a big of a company DJI is now, and uh, you know if that I bet you I would almost lay money down 147 million US dollars down. So that's more money than the combined uh, efforts of the entire US multi rotor industry of the manufacturers there. But that's more money than they've earned in this Probably. last year. The DJI but just the other lost. thing that this really the thing that's probably quite concerning is that if they were able to get away with this for that long how are they going to stand up and say you can trust our software we won't we will not steal your information because who's the, who's in the software teams taking backhanders to put back doors and things in there to spare that information off to special servers in china instead of keeping it in your cloud i mean they've lost credibility they don't have full control of their business if they can lose 150 million bucks they can't guarantee that someone hasn't backdoored all the software yeah i guess so that's 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 something to have another safety and security talk about isn't it um yeah i'll say i'm, I'm with you and i do feel a little bit sorry for him um but wow and and uh, was it the two and a half times the employees of spacex or something like that i read somewhere uh that's it's all pretty it's all pretty amazing big numbers one wonders how many uh how many airframes they're getting out the door now let's have a look at what's chris anderson doing these days <laughs> I'll let you go with that then. Well, they're continuing on with the science scan efforts, aren't they? And then it, making sure, I mean, that obviously now runs on DJI, so it doesn't, you know, I, I think there probably won't be that many people running it on the original uh, solo platform. I think it will mainly be running on DJI, so um, I'm, I'm assuming it's going fine for them. The, you know, 3DR is still there, but it, I don't think they'll ever get back into hardware. He does a lot of posts on the topic of rovers, so he seems very keen on yes. them, but he's, he's got no intention of getting into hardware and trying to make products out of that. It's just uh, just a pastime, apparently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And is DJI doing that drone they're sending to Titan? Who's doing that, or is that unique? 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Tell, tell us about NASA's that. NASA's going to send a drone to Titan. They're sending one of nuclear-powered drone going to Titan um, by 2035 so or 34. It's, it should be good. I won't be around to see it, but hey. Quarter to nine. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it, it, it's not long. Um, well, yeah, nuclear power. This is just my mind instantly this goes to popular mechanics and instantly yeah, nuclear power. And off we go, then the spaceship to the moon or whatever. It instantly goes there. Shame, man. All right. Hydrogen heli. You can't just put hydrogen heli in the comments, Louis. And, and, yes, he can. He just did. He did, didn't he? But I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> They did a hydrogen powered thing that was stayed up for two hours or something as opposed to electric or something it's just basically showing that hydrogen is the future but it's not it's hydrogen is a effectively um very poor way of storing energy oh hang on no it's a tt robotics one it's it, it'll be a contra-rotating job not contra-rotating a, a stacked uh hc2 jupiter okay yes 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 that's a very nice looking uh machine this they never answer their uh, emails those people and tt robotics is an rg pilot partner so that's must be what he's been lurking in the comments to tell us just lurking lurking so it's on the it's on the comments if you want it dear viewer it's a nice machine uh what's it say how long does it run for on that um that that hydrogen cell louis and the Boeing aircraft. Oh, Bruce, what about the Boeing aircraft that's hydrogen powered? That's one for you. Right, the Hindenburg. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know why all that was, isn't it? Because America wouldn't give them the um, helium. He uh, helium was a war uh, um, substance, as it were. So that's why the Germans had hydrogen. But anyway, uh, I don't know. 85 minutes fully loaded. And what sort of weight is fully loaded? Can we, can we carry a LIDAR with that, Louis? This is this is whispers, isn't it? Can you, Talking to the can you carry sheep with it. That's the question. Well, you would ask that in your current locale. Yes, <laughs> it's very. <laughs> Can't do it in Canada. In Canada, you're not allowed to carry any living creature with your drone. Oh well, there we are. No, I'm just doing this pretty much around the world. I should imagine that's the case. Well, I don't know. There's right. no explicit laws forbidding it here. Ah. Oh. Shortage in the US, uh, helium shortage is worldwide, and it's, yeah, anyway. Look, I'm reading from the comments. 20, it's over 25 kilos, said Louis. That was the answer I was looking for. It's, it's turning up to 11. Oh, the Phantom Eye project. Oh, yes, that thing kept crashing. Uh, and what happened to it? It's been shelved, and I can't remember why it's been shelved. There is a reason why it's been shelved. Five kilo payload. There we are. The comments are telling us. I'm pretty sure that Phantom Eye was shelved. Anyway, with that, do we have anyone else? Does anyone else have anything else, gentlemen? Going once, going twice, dear viewers. Thank you very much um, for joining in. Rory uh, was fantastic earlier, and I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on that. Uh, it'd be interesting if they see how much of physics they can break with their new machine. And this guy is absolutely qualified to make it happen, isn't he? I mean, <laughs> we are not worthy. Um, so I'll bid you farewell. Uh, have a uh, lovely weekend that's coming up. Uh, be safe and uh, don't fly anywhere near an airfield <laughs> in England. Anywhere, anywhere. Yeah, what about me? Well, <laughs> you. well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it is. We saw the saw the lightning video as well. Bruce got some good videos. Anyway, how near um, is near though? Oh no! Oh no! Hang on. I've got a bit of philosophical I, discussion I, time. I've, 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 got, I've got a bit our, of string here our, somewhere. The flying field uh, where I flew like yesterday is what two kilometers away from the airfield, and uh, in, I sometimes fly in that direction, so the plane ends up like less than two kilometers away from it. Okay, maybe three. Just don't be a nuisance, isn't it? Isn't that? Isn't that all? Oh, oh, isn't, isn't, isn't just don't be ruining the hobby. Ruining the hobby. Ruining the hobby actually, <laughs> no, I'm not because because the the field where I'm flying is a dedicated RC zone. Well, yes, but then you have aircraft flying all through it all the time. Bruce is a pretty dedicated RC zone with aircraft arriving all the time, isn't it? Um, well, that's their problem, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I suppose. No so. empathy. That's this boy's trouble. He's got no empathy. 
<laughs> no. Not what, on this keyboard? No, no M&P? I don't understand. Is that some sort of yeah. keyboard that they have over there? No M&P? <laughs> Anyway, right, no, not for those go. guys. No, we are going to go this time. We've got to go this time. All right, guys. Cheers, dear viewers. Thanks All very right. much. Take care. We'll see you again. Twenty-one hundred. Bye bye. Next week. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye bye.